Back here on the internet, Mel, in today's PC environment, would you be able to make the same movies you wrote and produced in the 70s? N not at all. Really? <clears throat> you couldn't. Come on. First of all, uh, when I, we, had a, we had a screening of Blazing Saddles, and... and <laughs> the, the man who was in charge of, of uh, Warner Brothers at that time, who shall be nameless, Ted Ashley, said... <laughs> uh, dragged me into the manager's office at the AFCO embassy and said, I'm going to give you some notes about the movie. You know, it was like his studio. The N-word, out. Uh, mm. Farting, of course, mm. out. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, punching mean, the horse. Punching, punching the horse. Uh, <laughs> punching an old lady. You know, she said, have you ever seen such... So the whole movie, movie, out. Like, so I would have had about 14 minutes of movie left, you know. <laughs> So, but you certainly did open the way for yeah. a lot more farting. Yeah, I did. I, I mean, <laughs> there is so much farting, pooping, and throwing up in movies. Yeah. And I hate all of it. Really. There's nothing less funny <laughs> or more gross than shit and fart yeah. in movies. And they, ne it, you know, it was like the first time it was funny. Yeah. It was like when Muhammad Ali bragged. It was great. It was the first time. Now we've seen it a million times. I know. It's I'm not sorry great. I started it. Yes, <laughs> you should. Now get out of here. I'm, <laughs> that's why I brought you here, so I can <laughs> chastise you for starting that horrible threat. All right. Uh, should personal drone use be regulated by the government? Ah, good question. A drone hit the White House lawn this week. Almost hit an intruder. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Drones? You'd be a good man to answer that, well, Laura. I mean, it's, yeah, it's interesting now that drones are flying over the White House that people realize that it's not something that they want happening over their home. Right. Um, they declared the Super yeah. Bowl a no-drone yeah. zone. Yeah, so there's a, right. there's a bit of irony in this in terms of right. the drone program that's happening in other countries. Um, this is uh, the last passion of privacy. We can talk to each other. <laughs> right. And nobody will listen because you don't get a rating. So we can talk. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a that's a big lie. It is a big lie. That's a big lie. We get a good rating. That's why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, well, I mean, of course it should be regulated, and while we're at it, we should stop the drone killing program. Probably do the both. The drone kill, yeah. Yeah. It probably creates more problems. I mean, it's I think a, we create a few enemies that way, yeah. Yes, we do. In fact, one of the Charlie Edbo killers said he was, uh, you know. Really? Uh, yeah, it was, I think, or maybe it was Gitmo. What, but, yeah. you know, terrorists have said it's either drone strikes killed my wedding party yeah. or Gitmo. I mean, these obviously are great recruiting tools. That's why he keeps saying, get out of there and we won't create them. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Representative Castro, as someone who sits on the Cybersecurity Caucus, what can you tell us about the government's effort to protect us from cyber terrorism? Well... Well, you know, you we've know, seen... That's the other uh, side of the coin, right? Yeah, I mean, we've seen the government get hacked, uh, both domestically and inter right. domestic and international folks. We've seen our private businesses get hacked. So the, the government's got to do a better job of working with private industry uh, to make sure, you know, to make it harder for these folks to tap into networks, to do what happened at places like Target and, and other, I think, Home Depot, maybe in other places where people's personal information was stolen. Uh, but, but honestly... We still have a long way to go to reach that level of cooperation. And there is some mistrust, I think, uh, on the side of private industry with the government. I feel like we'll never get to the point where we can feel secure in an email or a text. I mean, do you well, email? I mean, do you text? Do you? I, I, have, I have what's called an assistant. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> and she's... She's brilliant. She, right. she tweets for me. She texts for me. She, no, she doesn't but, tweet. Just... She tweets. Well, I, sometimes I tell her what to tweet. Were you, you, right. I, I didn't know you were on Twitter. You're on Twitter. I'm, tw I'm big on Twitter. You're big on... <laughs> you should be big on Twitter. I'm big yeah, on... yeah, I'm, I'm going to follow need, you on Twitter. I need to say something about that. I mean, I think the NSA uses a lot of resources. Actually, they, they're building backdoors into the Internet, and they should use their money to, like, make it secure because all of our information needs to be protected. Look, when CENTCOM gets hacked, right, and it right. was nothing actually that was very devastating, it wasn't a national security threat, but if they can get into sure. CENTCOM's computers, they can probably get into anyone else's computers that they want to get into. Okay. Who is they? <laughs> hackers. Anybody. Sitting in a basement, well, probably in hackers? their underwear, I mean, when they're well, not watching the Well, it can be a government shows. like North Korea, yeah. or it can be a teenager. Yeah. And we really? don't know. Yeah, of course, that's Always. who knows all this shit, is teenagers. <laughs> I think <laughs> No, it's true. And my assistant. They know. And, yeah, they know. <laughs>
What does the panel make of the latest friction between the Prime Minister of Israel and the Obama administration? Well, yes, that's a big uh, political brouhaha. John Boehner invited Netanyahu to speak without even telling the president. Um, where you stand on Israel, Mel? Uh, are well, you Jewish? You, do you think that... <laughs> I, uh, I meant to read your bio before the, the show, but... The word is, the response is only. But, uh, <laughs> I, I, you, do you think Net Netanyahu will, will sit next to Boehner unless he's really has a great makeup person before? <laughs> he's, you know... Well, he's gonna... He, he says, I want to be orange, too. He's... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What do you think of that? I think, I think the president ought to be the one inviting another head of state to speak to the Congress, address the Congress, and address the nation. It seems something nation. very new. I don't, I don't feel like we've ever, nobody ever really did that True. before. No, the, this the... sort of end run around the right. White House right. with foreign policy. That kind right. of... I mean, what happened to yeah. that stops at the water's yeah. edge and, yeah. you know, did the Dixie Chick said something bad about Bush in London and they were like super duper traitors yeah. just because right. they said Bush sucks it's in London. Like, it's, it was... in, it's in the province of the State Department. It should not be in, in Congress. President should tell the State Department. The State Department should write an invitation. I mean, and the Israelis it's the only clearly, protocol. Because right. right. yeah, you've got the yeah. Israeli ambassador, right, I think, Congressman, yeah. saying, actually, this is all Boehner's fault. This was not Netanyahu's fault. We thought that they had told the White House, honestly, is the line coming out of the it, Israeli government. Well, I think they're also, feeling that this has backfired. Yeah, and it's also complicating Israeli politics because yeah. their elections are so close also. And there had been a policy about the United States and the mm -hmm. president not meeting with the Israeli ambassador or any, any foreign I mean, there was head of state or any head of state when the elections were coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, so, All right, final question. I'm sure Israel said, don't help me. <laughs> To Boehner, and don't help me. Wait, I'm good. <laughs> me, don't help. Me into a lot of trouble. Yes, I'm fine out here. Yeah, right. I don't need any. <laughs> you could have worked the mountains, okay. Mel, what is your most embarrassing moment in show business? <laughs> Besides this show, I know you were going to say that. No, it's true. I many years ago, well, I think I was 12. I'm not sure. Yes, I was, you're... I was on a show called, uh, I forget, I Say or I Guess or I Something. A game show? Yeah, game show. And Bill Cullen, a brilliant, you know, the, he had that crew cut and those big glasses. And he was fast and he was good. He was really maybe the best you game, know, show, game host? show host that ever lived. A low he bar. Was, he was behind a podium, <laughs> always behind a podium all the time. And at the end of the show, and we all had fun. Julia Mead was my partner. And, I think we won, you know, it was a very exciting, you know, waste of time. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we, so we did, did this show. You were the celebrity on I was, I was, I was the celebrity. And at the end of the show, Bill Cullen comes from around his podium. From around his podium. And, and he says, Mel, it's, you know, it's such a... He said, come here. Mel, it's such a pleasure to meet you. Oh. And I said... Oh, he's doing Jerry Lewis. Oh. So I said, Oh. Well, I'll do Jerry. I said, and Oh. I, I, I did the same thing. And he was in front. No, it was weird. <laughs> because in the end, he hugged me and he said, Son of a bitch, you're the only one who had the guts to do me. Oh. And he says, What a relief. He says, You're, and he had tears in his eyes. And I said, Well, I wanted to, I wanted to do that for you. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Mel Brooks, ladies and gentlemen. A national treasure.